Well, hello there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show from lovely Utah. <laughs> I am as of today on day two of a road trip to Colorado. And I called this week's show, are you committed to your, I have to look down, are you committed to your plans or what will make your life work? What are you committed to? Are you committed to your plans? Are you committed to what will make your life work? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Lori. Um, so I'm really, I'm excited um, about, so where do we want to go today? Um, this, we are in the middle, we, me and me, are in the middle of big sweeping changes in my life right now. And um, I was really looking at all the different things I could talk about this week and I was like, this, this particular thing is really relevant to me now. And one of the things that I'm always inviting myself out of is the linearity of like, well, I've decided it has to go this way and so it has to go this way. And, you know, it's less and less and less all the time with access consciousness stuff, but I still slip into it. You know, I still slip into, well, this has got to go this way because blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples that are very, very recent um, and hopefully that will create some space for you too. Um, we just changed our whole living situation. So my housemates and I, we were sharing a big house in Vancouver and um, it was fun, it was great, until it wasn't. It stopped being fun. And um, and if you guys have um, any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will riff on those too, okay? So if, if this is sticking you in any way, if you have a question about something in your life or what you could choose or a tool to make your life work better, I'd be so happy to talk about that today. So anyway, so you guys knew, a lot of you knew that we were all living together, right? And it was good until it changed. And when it changed, we all had a lot of choices to make. And so we did. And we were living in this house, knowing that we wanted to get out of the house, knowing we wanted to change the thing and move on and all of that, and felt kind of stuck in this situation that we didn't, couldn't, couldn't change, right? And this is one of the first signs that you are in some sort of self-imposed limitation. You're in some sort of form or structure or significance about a thing. As soon as you've gone into, well, this is the way it is and it can't be any different, then you are self-imposing um, a thing. So I was chatting with one of my friends about this whole situation and she was like, well, just come stay with me. Like you can pay rent there and you can just come stay with me. And I was like, it was one of those moments that inserted itself into my world that um, was, was one of those things that I had just never considered. Like I hadn't even once considered asking what are the other possibilities for this thing changing and being easier, right? Because it wasn't that easy, all of us living there in the way that we were. It was, and so when she did that, I started looking at everything else that I decided needed to be the way it was, right? Like, well, we're in a lease, and so therefore it has to be this way, and so we're this, and then so therefore it has to be this way. And I was, I started seeing it everywhere. I started seeing everywhere I'd gone into all of this solid stuff around things that I had just unconsciously decided couldn't change. And I really, 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 truly invited myself to like, okay, well, everything that is, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you don't know what that crazy statement is, go to theclearingstatement.com. Because it wasn't working for me to, to, it was actually, I was getting bent, stapled, folded, and mutilated in what I was trying to uphold and decide has to be the way it is. Like, I was the one that was losing. And so I started looking at all these things, all the different things, like what if I decided in my business has to be the way it is? What if I just, and then what's gonna actually make things work? Oh my God, it's Frank Fidella. <laughs> what's gonna actually make things work? Okay, so example number two was this week, or last week, I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? I'm in Utah. Um, Last week was, I, I chose, so my friend said, hey, come down here, you can live with us, whatever. And so amazingly enough, choice creates, okay? Choice creates. What does it create? We don't know. You just have to choose. Choice creates, it creates awareness, it creates stuff, it creates possibilities, choice creates. So I chose it. I gave myself a week and a half to get all my shit packed and moved and things. And so last week was the week that I was going to launch this big membership program. Well, I realized like last weekend, I was looking at the week ahead and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be packing, I'm gonna be doing this, I'm gonna be doing this thing, and then I'm gonna be driving. I'm like, what's actually gonna make my life work here? And I'm like, well, I require to create some money and I require to have some fun doing that, so what can I create? 
And out of that question of what's gonna make my life work and what can I create came this really amazing three-part series on money. And then this, this weekend I did this, this sale on some, some of my money pulls that were just epic that I've never actually put out for sale before. And so what made my life work was some things that I wouldn't have even considered if I'd have been committed to the plan. If I'd have commi been committed to, well, the spring membership starts on Wednesday and I'm gonna create the thing because I've decided it's the thing and like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what's gonna make my life work? All right, well, the spring membership is on indefinite hold. I don't know when that's starting, <laughs> you know? And it's awesome, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be great. None of that's relevant to my life working. And I just sort of wanted to have this conversation with you because like even in the middle of using all the tools, right, it's still so easy to get caught into rational reality, right? Like to get caught into, especially like you have your own business, right? You put a product, you put a thing out there. It's like, well, I'm committed to the thing and I've got to do the thing and I got to do the thing that are going to do the thing. And then it's not really working, but you're not asking the question of like, well, what can I do to make this work? And that has been coming up over and over and over and over. It's almost like the theme of everything right now. What's actually going to make this work? And um, Chelsea, yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, do it. So just ask the question. And listen, guys, this is the power of access tools and the power of question is that the moment you're willing to be a question, truly, of what's going to make this work, the moment you're going to get awareness. Well, not maybe not, maybe not that moment. So here's another thing I want to add to this is like you got to actually let your, wait a second. Be, be the question, ask the question, and then hang on for a couple days. Just let it, let the universe move everything around for you. I'm gonna give you another example that's really cool and how I ended up at this house today. So I was, uh, we went on the road. Um, we started, well, first of all, I planned for us to be on the road 12 hours before, 24 hours uh, before we actually got on the road. So in the whole process of like, uh, I had in my calendar that we were going to be on the road at 3 p.m. after my classes on Friday. We were not on the road at 3 p.m. <laughs> on Friday. That is not what occurred. So John had all this other stuff. He had all these other things come up and things he had to take care of. And here's the thing about including other people in your life, children, partners, or whatever, is they've got things too. There's their life, right? And I didn't take any of that into consideration. I'm like, we're going to be on the road at 3 p.m. Okay, so so here I am. Miss, I'm, my mom calls me the time Nazi, right? I don't know why she says that. It's weird. And I'm like, oh, it's getting to be 3 p.m. I know we're not going to be on the road. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. So I'm like trying to calm myself down, right? Because I can get pretty like, mm. There's everything that you think is wrong about you is also strong about you. So there's some real capacities that I have for moving things. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I tend to move a lot of shit out into the world, right? I got some capacities there. I can also overuse those and abuse the shit out of people. <laughs> and if you're really close to me, you get the privilege of being abused sooner and faster if that's what I choose. So I'm watching my blood start to roil. You know, it's going up a little bit. And I was really like, okay, I have choices here in this moment. I can like get all over John, which was not gonna contribute to John because John was already making himself wrong and judging the shit out of himself. I can do that. I can be that girl. <laughs> or I can choose something else. What do I wanna choose here? So I started pock and potting, destroying and creating all of my projections, all my expectations, separations, judgments and rejections of how that day was supposed to go of how my road trip was supposed to go, of when we, the fuck we were supposed to get to Colorado, of how long, all the things, right? All of those damn things that were the things that were creating the upset, which I was creating. I was creating the things that created the upset so that I could be upset so that I could, what exactly? Was that gonna make my life work? Was being pissed at John because of this, was that actually gonna make my life work? And I was like, that is not gonna make my life work. First of all, I'm gonna have to be mad for at least 24 hours, which is a lot of work. Like, I don't know if y'all have been mad for more than 24, 48 hours. It's like hard. And I'm like, I, I'm about to go on a road trip. Why would I choose to be mad for 24, 48 hours? Like, that's crazy. I don't feel like being crazy today. I'd actually rather find that space that's the space of adventure and fun that other people seem to be able to do that I'm not currently choosing. So what's that? So I took myself out and got a hamburger rode myself or get, took myself on the you know tour of indigo i love bookstores and i just sort of walked around got a coffee i like sat in the car for a while and all i did was pock and pot all my projections expectations separations judgments and rejections and i was like 
what if this could be an adventure, self? You know, now, now some, for some of you guys, you are natural adventurers. This is easy for you. This was a process for me. <laughs> okay, I'm a controlling bitch. I like control. And when I don't have control, I'm not at my happiest. But that's changing, because I'm also like now, I don't really like not being happy. And I'm the one that has control over that. <laughs> So if I'm going to control something, it's going to be what I'm choosing internally now. Because, you know, John's going to be John. John's going to do life the way John does. And if John's a contribution in my life, and he is, and I want to have him in my life, I get to choose what I do with that. I can choose to abuse him, which is going to create one thing. I can choose to abuse myself, which is going to create another thing. Or I can choose to be something else that's going to actually make my life work better. So I chose something else that made my life work better and I took myself out and I was like, what if this could be fun? What if this could be an adventure? And I'm like, okay. And so I just went through all the things. I'm like, you know what? You don't have to pay rent this month. You get to go on the road for as long as you want. And you know what? You have money. So you can, ha that, can that can take as long as you want. You can stay in fancy hotels. You can eat fancy food. You can do whatever you want, right? So I started like, you know, changing the, the thing for me. And so it did, it changed. And we didn't end up getting on the road until the next day at around three o'clock, which was also quite a bit later than I wanted to, to get on the road. But I just kept inviting myself to the pock and potting and the what's right about this that I'm not getting. And it was so cool, because when we finally did get on the road, I mean, John did give himself a really hard time. And I just was able to be a cool person. You know? And listen, I can be a not cool person in a flash of a second. I can be a raging bitch from hell. <laughs> like, don't give me... That is a choice that I leave available to myself, all right? But I didn't choose that. I actually chose to be cool. And I was so glad I did, because he was already being so hard on himself. And I was so glad that I didn't add to that. And I, we would laugh about it. I'm like, look, just so you know, I'm using so many tools right now, it's crazy. I, I have a tool belt about 15 miles wide on my waist that I'm using. So you're, you, just so you know. <laughs> and so we got to laugh about that and we got to actually have a good time. And throughout the whole trip, I mean, it feels like it's been 25 years that we've been on the road so far, but like even yesterday, we were in our hotel and I was like, okay, what does my body want? He wanted to sleep a little later and then we finally got up and I'm, I was looking at where we might land that day at the end of the day and I was like oh my god we're gonna be in Utah I know there's access people in Utah so I was like I wonder what's possible <laughs> I was like I wonder how much fun I could have just seeing what's possible so I just put a post on Facebook I'm feeling a little crazy like anybody want to get together and have a little class now I have to say that in my fantasy brain, we were going to pull into Utah around 7 p.m., which is perfect timing for a little impromptu class. Well, that is, that is not what occurred. We uh, pulled in at like 10.15, and I realized that after we started driving. So, But what was cool is it like pulled out of the woodwork these amazing people that I got to meet. And, and then one of them opened up her house to me. She doesn't... Her husband went out of town. She has a whole house. It's beautiful. She's like, I got space. I have no husband. Come stay. And I'm like, I almost resisted it. I almost was like, no, no, I don't want to be a bother. We can stay in a hotel, which is true. We can. And then I was like, what would it create energetically to say yes? And it was so cool. She's so cool. She's sitting right over there. <laughs> and um, it's just been such a gift for all of us for this little thing. And, you know, we created a class in June too, but I was really like, I don't care what this creates. What What is possible that I haven't considered? What would it be like to drive all over the U.S. and just meet people and say hi and, you know, create energies that weren't there before? Because I know how grateful I've been when people just pop into my life and it just, you know, it pops something into being that maybe couldn't have been popped before or whatever. I was like, what would it be like to just be willing to be that and have fun and, like, connect and... I haven't chosen that before. Like that's completely irrational. Out of I was I've spent the last like almost two years either traveling two classes on airplanes or being in my house. And I asked in December what would it be like to travel the world and facilitate foundation classes, and then I left it. I didn't make it happen. Didn't try to force it. And as of this month, I'm about to travel the world and facilitate foundation classes. So how does it? better than that and that is you know that's so much of what you're capable of choosing and creating you can't plan you well probably all of it actually <laughs> what you can do is you can ask and you can receive 
and you can ask and you can receive and you can choose and you can ask and you can receive and you can choose. Virginia, come. All right, let's do it, Roseanne. <laughs> so what, would, what do you want to ask for? What would make your life work? What would actually make your life work? What are you choosing right now that's making your life hard? And what would make your life work? That's it. You just got to start asking for that because you, you can't brain this out, okay? You keep trying to live from your brain. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm perfect myself. I always choose consciousness. <laughs> Lying! Um, but you can't, like, you can't figure that stuff out. You can only go, okay, what do I desire to create here? Well, I want to have money. Okay. What's going to be some fun ways of generating money as soon as possible with total ease? What are all the different ways you could generate money? Like, all right, I want to be a coach. Cool. Where can I start? Da, da, da. Just let it simmer. Let it simmer for a minute. And then I'm doing my brain in with travel and not having any future planned. Yeah, let your brain go if you're willing. Pock and pot everywhere where you're trying to control everything with your brain. Hi, Shayna. I <laughs> love you guys. Pock and pod your projections, your expectations, your separations, your judgments, and your rejections of how you think everything is supposed to go, of what your expectations are of how it should go, your projections of how it should go, and then everywhere you're separating, judging, and rejecting you. Because that's all projections and expectations do, is they create the space where you get to separate, judge, and reject you. And that's so fun. I mean, it's fun, right? Like, you know, that's a good time. But so is having the life you'd like to have. So is having ease. And what would it be like to really, really, really start asking for ease? Like asking for the stuff that's going to actually make things work. And a mind is a wonderful thing to waste. Yes, sir. All right, so a few of y'all commented and I just kept talking like a rude mother trucker at dinner. Just kept shooting my mouth off. And Chelsea's about to travel, so she's super excited about traveling to Bali, and she doesn't have plans, which is so weird for Chelsea. She's such a planner. <laughs> I get caught up between making plans to have a predictable future and then staying open to possibilities, but then not creating money. What else is possible? Yeah, so, and so to riff on that for a minute, like when I was looking at the life that I wanted to have, it included travel. And I was like, well, if I'm going to travel as much as I want to travel, I require income streams that aren't connected to brick and mortar buildings, right? So what would it take to start generating those now? Now listen, when you get a new brilliant idea, and that might be for you, I think Chelsea's got a leg up on this one, but if that's a new brilliant idea for you, you're gonna have to give it a minute. You're gonna have to commit to it and generate it and create it. Like, you know, it takes a second for people to start saying yes and handing you their money. But if you're committed to it, if you choose it, it will fucking show up. So you gotta start to know that for yourself. When you choose shit, shit shows up. When you don't choose it, when you're just trying it or you're dabbling in it, shit can't show up. Because well, guess what? You haven't chosen it. That's, it's just that simple. So what could you choose that would make your life work? What could you start to generate and create that would make your life work? And just start and see what you're capable of. Does inquiry get a person out of being stuck? Actual question. Actual question. That is true curiosity will change everything. How do you know you're in true curiosity and true wonder? There's no answer for your question. Have any of you guys ever been able to come up with an actual answer for what else is possible here that I haven't considered? You might come up with ideas, but an actual answer for that question doesn't exist. So when you're in an actual question, you're just wondering like, hey, I wonder, what, I wonder how this could turn out greater than I could possibly imagine. Oh, I didn't share with you. So one of the things we were asking for on this particular night, last night, was we needed a hotel or a place to stay that was gonna have great internet and let us check out late. <laughs> Well, nothing shows up the way you think it will. So guess what we got? Even better, this amazing woman who I got to meet and connect with who had a house who has great internet and I can check out late. <laughs> so when you're willing to ask for what you desire, it can show up in the way that it shows up, how it shows up, in a way that's going to be greater than you could possibly imagine and create more possibilities than you could possibly orchestrate. And so as you become willing to just ask about that shit with no expectation and no agenda and no idea of how it's actually going to show up and be willing to be surprised, that's when you get to go on the adventure of living. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's Crystal Crawford. I'm reading all your comments now because now I want to talk about your stuff. Enough about me. Hi, Blair said hi, but define work. I've been asking who I can contact to promote this. What can I do to make this profitable? Although I'm not sure if that last question is correct. 
Yeah, so uh, a question is an open-ended thing. Like, what would it take for this to turn out greater than I could possibly imagine? Who or what can contribute to this in a totally different way that I've never considered? Because we've all kind of got our rabbit trail tracks that our brain tends to run down of like, I'm doing a class and who can promote for me, right? Which is so light and so fun. Like, you know, as a kid, can you imagine as a two-year-old, you're like, I'm doing a class and who can I get to promote for me? No, a two-year-old's like, mud, mud. <laughs> so we get into being adults and we have an online business and now it's all fucking serious like we're any promoters and it's not that that's wrong and it's not that you can't have promoters it's the question that you're being that actually creates the space that something magical can show up and I don't mean magical like Whoa! I mean like magical like like today is magical this woman's house is magical the connections that we've made here are magical they couldn't have been orchestrated. They just occurred with my willingness to just push it out there and see what would happen. So what if you put classes out there just to see what would happen? What if instead of going into, oh my God, I need a thing and I gotta have the thing and I gotta do the, all those are conclusions with question marks on the end to make them look like questions. What if you could go on the adventure of creation instead of the trying to create a fixed result, which doesn't actually really work? Yeah. We've been, Frank Fridella, I know, has, they, her, oh, I can't talk. <laughs> her and him have been living as nomads with three kids and a dog for almost a year. To sum it up, oh my God, what the fuck? What fresh hell is this? <laughs> I mean, adventure. <laughs> I love it, Frank. You're so awesome. And brave. Oh my gosh, I love your comments. Thank you so much. Income streams not connected to bricks and mortar. What if working is boring for me? Yeah, working is boring. Okay, there's two things about work, y'all. First of all, for humanoids, which if you are watching me, you are very likely a humanoid because otherwise I don't think you could handle this. <laughs> That's a conclusion. For humanoids, work is play and play is work. So work isn't actually work to you. You don't have a definition of work that fits this reality. When you are actually working at something you enjoy you're playing it's not working for you so first of all you love to work because every humanoid i know loves like works 18 jobs and they're really really happy with it even if they bitch about it they'll keep doing it because there's something about it that's fun um so we love to work but we like to work at the things we like to work at it's as simple as that we don't want to do some stupid ass job just because we have to and when we get ourselves into that position we're pretty quick to leave including relationships by the way it may take us 10 or 15 years but after a while we're like okay now i'm done I had to do that for a while. I had kids, whatever, I'm over it. All right, so work is play. <laughs> Who can contribute to me being me? All right, cool. So I realized how I never used to think about money and now I'm obsessed with it. Okay, who does that belong to? Who does that belong to? You guys gotta remember you're psychic. And every time you get your bars run, every time you run a clearing, and Blair, I happen to know you've been in three full days of classes with me, so we've run one or two clearings, maybe three, you become more aware of where everybody else is functioning from, and especially with money and all the things that are super dense and intense, you know, like money, body, business, all the things. Um, so your parents, cool. So you got to start to ask really who does this belong to and what's my reality with this. And that's, you guys, I'm realizing as I came on the road, like, my reality with life is that one, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. That has been my reality forever. I just hadn't really claimed it. Number two, things occur. Magic occurs. It is, it is real. It is real. The universe really does have my back. And three, life is an adventure. And I realized after we got on the road yesterday that I had taken all of that away from myself by choosing what I did, but I got so much awareness by choosing what I did. So it wasn't even that that was wrong. It was that it gave me a really strong sense of what, what that direction's like. And also like, I think my reality is way more gypsy than I've ever really acknowledged. Like, I don't know how many times I've moved in my life, but it's a lot. I can't count it on this hand and this hand. Like it's a lot of times I've moved. And I've always been willing to just change at the drop of a hat. It's like, oh, this relationship's over, okay, bye. And I'm just, you know, I might cry for a couple months, depending on the relationship, but I'm willing to change. And I realized that with this thing of going on the road and like not really knowing where the next thing is gonna be is that I don't have a problem with that. I've always been comfortable with that. 
it's everybody else around me who told me that I should want to settle down and have a house and all that normal stuff that I've just been like, I tried it. And I'm not saying I'll never own property. I'm not even saying any of that stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Am I really being that funny today? <laughs> Everyone's dying. I'm just saying like, I think my reality is a lot more different than I've ever known. And I really, choosing to go on the road was like, what if I could actually discover what the adventure of living is? Like, what would it be like to let this show me what ask and receive is really all about? I don't know if I've really played with that to the fullest extent that I could play with it. Like, what if I use this journey to really play with asking and receiving? And I'll tell you, I'm already impressed. <laughs> One little thing, two little, three little, four little, you know, it's actually multiple things in a day. I'm already excited. And what's more exciting about that is like, what does that create for my business reality, for my financial reality? What's that gonna create for the people that come to classes with me? What's that gonna invite the world to? Like all of y'all gypsies that are trying to be normal, you know? What would it be like if we were really to claim our, be willing to claim our realities and travel the world like Gary and Dane do facilitating? Cause we're so different. You are such a different invitation to things than I am and vice versa. And that's the gift we are. And you know, us being willing to like rumble around the world like a tumbleweed with tentacles of change. I don't know why that came out as tentacles. Is like so cool. Anyway, I just want to invite you to look at what's going to make your life work. You know, if you've got stuff that's not working right now, and what do I, what do I mean by that? It's heavy. You're not happy. It's heavy. You're not happy. <laughs> Ask. What's it going to take to make this work? That's it. Just be that question for a while. What's it going to take to make this work? If you've got a relationship that's like not working, not that fun, what's it going to take to make this work? What do I have to be willing to be here? Do I have to be willing to be wrong? Do I have to be willing to be an asshole? Do I have to be willing to be kind? Do I have to be willing to be, what do I have to be willing to be? Slutty? What is it? Anything. I'll be anything. And if you're not willing to be anything, change it. Just change it. Okay, this needs to change. And we can even still shack up, but something's got to change because this isn't working and I want it to work. What would it be like for you to be committed to what's going to work for you and to find out what that is? Because that's going to be this ongoing play and discovery of life. And it's already been that. And for a lot of us, it's been hard. But you get to choose something else now. You get to choose hard if you want, but you can also choose and ask for what would it be like if this were ease and joy and glory? Universe, show me that. I haven't seen it before. I have no reference points for this, but I'm in. <laughs> you got to add the mouth shake. That makes it better. All right, I'm going to go. I've been talking to myself and you guys long enough. I adore you. If you liked this, would you share it? And, um, and then I will, I'm going to go get on the road and drive me. I'm Southern all of a sudden. Uh, ever since I got to the United States, apparently I'm Southern. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. I adore your faces off. Thank you for being.